Music superstar Cardi B and also Riverdale's Lily Reinhardt have both signed on to join Constance Wu and Jennifer Lopez in the STX Films drama Hustlers. On top of that, the cast also now includes Kiki Palmer and Julia Stiles. The screenplay for this one was inspired by a 2016 New York Magazine article that went viral. Wu and Lopez are going to play characters who lead a group of former strip club employees who turn the tables on their Wall Street clients. Jeff is also hearing that Cardi B is going to be playing a character named Serena, who is one of Lopez's best friends and then becomes her accomplice. All right, Koi, I don't, I don't want to seem like I'm so out of the loop, but like, I know who Cardi B is, but I don't follow her whatsoever. Is there anything about Cardi B that would make you think, oh, she could be a great actor? She's larger than life in a way that I think lends itself to the music to acting translation. I think Cardi B is very outspoken politically. She's very outspoken on social media. She believes in the things she believes in. And whether or not, like, I don't know what shades of gray her extreme personality is, but I guarantee there is an augmented reality to her persona. I don't know Cardi B. I can't speak to how she is on Sunday morning, but to me, it registers as there is definitely a persona she puts on, which to me implies acting. So that I think is an, uh, at least a, a tinge of like, oh, here we go. This is an opportunity. I also, I think it's always great to give people a chance to try a different wheelhouse. I think it's always great when you're going to sell a certain amount of money because Cardi B's in it. She sells a certain amount of tickets. So I think why not give someone a chance to translate? I love when people mm -hmm. translate and they actually land it. Like Will Smith, I thought was a great mm. rapper, man. Will Smith turning into Fresh Prince is one of the best things that happened to cinema. Will Smith was Mr. Fourth of July for a long time. I'm not saying that's going to happen with Cardi B, but if someone wouldn't, didn't give Will Smith a chance or LL Cool J a chance or any of these people that mm -hmm. translated, then we'd be missing out on a lot of great art. So Cardi B is playing a persona in day-to-day -day life. She's got the crazy fingers. She's got the... <laughs> and she has all these things that she does that's iconic. So why not give her the chance to be a crazy stripper with Jennifer Lopez and other weird sentences I didn't think would say today with Spork existential crises. <laughs> it's a weird day in news, guys. There it is. Not to get uh, too off track here, but did you see the, uh, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air dramatic spin that someone did where they no. shot like a bunch of... <laughs> content where if uh, if his story was was darker and I guess more grounded and realistic it's actually a very well done trailer That's amazing I highly recommend seeking it out I think they just call it Bel Air maybe Ooh, but go Google that dark. it was real I was very very impressed I um been, I might have enjoyed the show are you a Cardi B fan Robert? uh Cardi B fan yes I love her music and she has that one recently the one that she did with Maroon 5 which I thought was enjoyable uh girl like you I think it was a uh, girl like me rather uh and she's she, you know she was she had a big Super Bowl commercial the Pepsi commercial she did um uh, here's the deal: 42 mil or 54? Yeah, 42 million followers on Instagram. Jesus. 5.4 million followers on Twitter. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the STX Films. They're building at a smaller budget to make money. That's how you do it. You bring people in. A producer years ago told me when I was uh, when I was acting, he said, "Get followers. That's that that helps you in the room. It can be the difference in you booking something and not. Now I don't have 5.4 million followers or 42 million followers, <laughs> but it does help you when you get a following to get in the room. Cardi B obviously has a following already on social media, as Koi pointed out, politically as well as uh, uh, you know in the music scene. So it makes sense, and it's a nice irony that's Jennifer Lopez mm -hmm. that she's going, who also transitioned you know from singing into this and back and forth and all that jazz, you know, doing the fly girl stuff she did on In Living Color, and then what she became as an actress, then back into singing and then back and forth. So that's po all. Of this is possible. The premise itself of the movie bothers me because, I mean, what's the big thing that's been happening within uh, this empowering of women? And it's like, we're tired of playing strippers. We're tired of playing call girls with, with hearts of gold. But it seems like this is, this is kind of a low rent type of concept. And we'll see if it works. But the thing with Jennifer Lopez is, and this was shocking to me to discover, I didn't think anybody went to her movies anymore. And she doesn't do that many. But the last two or three that she's released theatrically have almost have completely destroyed at the box office compared to their production budget which is like a five million dollar production budget 64 million dollar worldwide or 14 million production budget 82 million dollar world so the movie though the lady makes money mm -hmm. and so she has a right to do these films she so uh, we'll see how this one turns out stx is slowly building with these smaller films and i like it can i tell you a little more about the story sure, that sure, i sure. think might pique your interest more mm -hmm. so i while like a revenge I was, story That's while good. i was busy uh researching it. Uh, this description really stuck out to me. And uh, the director and the writer on this is uh, Lorraine Scafaria. And her script here 
This says it takes place in New York City in the wake of the financial crisis, and it explores the toll that that took on the livelihood of the, the strippers, the dancers who were basically relying on their Wall Street clients. And then a, a direct quote from her that really caught my eye was, this film is an, emp is an empathetic look at women and men, our gender roles, what we're valued for, what we've been told is our value in every movie, TV show, every corner of culture. Men have been told they're worth the size of their bank accounts. Women have been told they're worth the symmetry of their faces, their bodies, their beauty, and that's what this film is based on. Huh. The rules of the club are the rules of the world. The cast had me. When I read that, I think this could be a great pairing, okay. and I think this movie could have a lot more to say than what maybe you were initially That's thinking. That's a fair point, Barry. You're right. That does that does pique my interest. And I know she did The Meddler, which yes. I actually found to be a very cute and entertaining film. So uh, yeah, but now I'm now I, I'm inter interested. The rules of the club or the rules of the world is a great logline. Like it? right there in itself, I'm very intrigued because I love when you see the seedy underbelly of the world and how that reflects the any tier, any strata of humanity. Yeah. Where you start is you, as you carry on, it's the same problems, just bigger. So I really curious about how they translate that into this movie. If the log line's as good as the movie, room for good hands. Yeah. If you want to read the uh, full story that this movie is based on, it's called The Hustlers at, Score, at Scores, and you can actually find it right here on thecut.com. So go check that out if you have time.